Now I'd like to have a brief look at a system theory model of work. Um, the, the system theory model is a, is a model of how an organization functions more than any, anything to do with the process. Uh, we devise our processes uh, following largely the flow of work. It, it could be the, um, the, the, the flow of transformations of the raw materials uh, through to the final product, or it could be the movement of information uh, through some process. But it tends to be this um, workflow uh, type of analysis. Now that's great for, for uh, figuring out um, how the work is done, but it's not so good for trying to investigate things. So a system theory model has a look at the organization as a whole that surrounds this workflow uh, of the thing. Now to give some idea of what a system theory model looks like, um, there's one, and it shows the, um, the uh, system theoretic view of a software development or system development project starting with the, the organization's strategic management. So we have the organization, their strategic directions, it's made decisions about what products are going to be developed or what software systems are going to be developed and um, the, the budget and the resource allocations for that uh, as well as the resource allocations to the rest of the organization. Now, the layer below that is the um, tactical uh, management. This is project project management, project governance, call it uh, whatever label you want. Running beside that, that um, is intimately entwined with the um, system software and system development, is the quality management system. Now, this is not necessarily the only other system that's involved because you could have a security system or um, let's see. Uh, I don't know, IP management system or something like that. You could have a number of systems running more or less in parallel, all of which um, do have some effect on, on the actual value production. But uh, the point is we have another layer there. Now, under, underneath that, the, the, um, the value chain of the processes that these operate on are, in fact, um, the project management and then the software development uh, end of things. Now some, like project governance, operate on project management and project management operates on the um, design and development uh, workflow or processes themselves. Others, like uh, quality management, um, can have some effect on both the project management and the, um, the uh, software development. Now in any uh, system theoretic model, um, you, can, you could argue that there are uh, some levels underneath that that are supporting processes such as uh, configuration management or um, I don't know, verification and validation and things like that. Um, but the, the essential uh, structure of the system theory model is that the work is achieved in, in uh, layers of um, uh, levels of the organization. Uh, each of which operates on the layer below it, um, giving uh, constraints, guidance, resources, and getting back um, feedback and, and um, uh, output uh, from the layer below it. If you're going to investigate something, how do we use the system theory model? Uh, Nancy Levison has proposed a system theory model for investigating um, accidents, mostly military accidents. Um, where you say two helicopters collide or you know, they, there's a friendly fire incident or something of that nature. Um, her, her model is called STAMP. Now, uh, personally, I'm more interested in the um, unexpected outcomes of software development projects, so I would tend to use the, the one that I've proposed. Um, and the question is, how do we go about it? Well, we take each level of the model, and at each level, we start asking about the intent of this level. So the strategic management level, what did the strategic management of the organization intend be achieved? And then how did they implement, um, how did they implement matters so that they achieve this intention? That is, how do they allocate the resources, the, the resources of time, budget, um, infrastructure, uh, personnel, how are they allocated 
to achieve those um, outcomes. Uh, obviously, the question then is, well, uh, was that an appropriate way of, <laughs> was that an appropriate thing to do? Now, then we should examine what risks were there that the intentions would not be achieved. So we've had, we had a, a declaration of intention, or we find out what the intention was. We have some idea of how, um, how the affairs of the organization were arranged to try and achieve that intention. We should then look at the risks that those intentions would not achieve or would not have been achieved given the um, uh, distribution of those resources. Um, now, if we have some understanding of the risks of these not being achieved, what was done to manage those risks and to minimize or manage or, or mitigate those risks? Now, if we ask those four questions at each level, we would get uh, Aside from anything else, an enormous amount of information. Um, but it's a means of examining the entire system to uh, see how the entire system contributed to this outcome rather than focusing attention on um, the, um, what was going on right at the lowest level and excluding the higher levels. This, the system theory model focuses attention on how the entire system functioned and contributed toward the accident. How about the advantages and disadvantages of a system theory model? Uh, well, the advantages first. The main advantage is that it draws attention away from um, the actual where the work is actually done and draws attention toward how the entire system was set up. So you're much more likely to get uh, a view on how the uh, environment uh, contributed to the accident. Now, an observation there was that a lot of systems have this tendency to drift toward failure. Uh, that is, things that are not causing problem tend to get ignored or not done as well or something of that nature. So, um, say with um, the maintenance might not be done or, um, oh, we've never, we've never seen a, an error in that before, so we just won't inspect that or something of that nature. Now, gradually, systems do tend to drift toward a state where they break. And the, the problem then is, well, where is it going to break and is that going to be significant? So uh, examining the entire system tends to try and catch this drift toward failure. So they're very good for that. Um, they, the, the system theory model also tends to reduce this tendency to use hindsight uh, to assess something. Now hindsight is, is that um, Given the outcome, it's very easy to go back and, and uh, detect um, the trail leading toward it. Now we see that uh, when there has been some um, uh, terrorist attack or something is the, uh, the biggest ones. Um, given that we know there was some uh, bomb went off or something of that nature, it's very easy to go back and find out all the information that was available at the time. Oh, that's great. Uh, the only problem was all that information at the time is only evident as in hindsight. Now that we know the outcome, its significance becomes apparent. Before the event, its significance was not apparent, otherwise it would have been acted on. We think, we hope. Uh, so the system theory model tends to reduce this tendency toward um, hindsight bias. And it provides a very disciplined structure with which to examine some things. So that's the advantages. The disadvantages uh, that it's a very rigorous and disciplined approach and it takes quite a lot of effort to, to do. So it's probably only appropriate or uh, feasible when there is some serious thing to investigate and there is a serious investigation to go on. But if those two conditions hold, that is, it's a serious problem, it's a serious investigation, that is a very rigorous and disciplined way with which to investigate the uh, accident concerned.